As we close out this week, C.J. Stroud clears protocol. He will be playing Sunday. Cody and I talk about how that impacts this team offensively. And will the injuries hamper the Texans' run defense? You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a what's a Friday episode Friday. of Locked On Texans podcast, a part Hello. of Locked On podcast. Greatest movies Network, ever. Friday. Your team every, every day. day. Say it with me now. Your, your team, team every, every day. day. As you can see, we're excited. You guys should be excited because your franchise quarterback is back hmm. playing football. Thank you for watching. If this is your first time. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texas podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. And if you are a returning listener lending your ear for another episode, thank you for coming back as Cody and I continue to talk Texan. I'm your Texans football analyst, John Some Sports Guy Hickman, and always on the other side, the man with the plan, insider for the Houston Texas Sports Illustrator's own credential media member, Cody Davis. We're going to look at Year three. Oh my god, for AJ 80 Andre Johnson, the Hall mm. of Famer. He's a finalist again. So we'll talk about that. Uh, will the Texans injuries hamper the run defense? You got Sheldon Rankins out, possibly Malik Collins, possibly out. You got Will Anderson not playing. John Grenard was in that practice on Thursday. Houston is down with a lot of bodies. Will Derrick Henry. Will he resurface, or will they be able not. to contain him? We open up today's show looking at how CJ Stroud is clearing the protocol. But before we do that, I want to let you guys know today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. Terms and conditions apply. Cody Thursday, well, really on mm-hmm. Wednesday, we got C.J. Stroud back at practice. Thursday was a full go. He had an opportunity to speak at the podium and before. We, we we talk about C.J. Stroud coming back. I just want to let you guys know mm. that with two games on the line, yes, sir. left on the end of the season, Texans got the playoffs on the line, and I'm glad that this franchise who has had a rejuvenation of a season. Mm. It's getting their franchise quarterback. It's getting their franchise quarterback, as you can see here with Tamar's Retro's uh, hoodie, back on the field to, with a chance to get into the playoffs. And you know what's my favorite part about the Texans getting CJ back? It doesn't even have to do with the playoff race. It doesn't have to do with anything knowing that the Texans are in a three-way tie for the number one seed in the Ooh. AFC South. You know what's my favorite part about all this is? What you got? That Coach D'Amico Ryans, this coaching staff, Nick Casario, ownership, everybody involved, team doctors and everything, took their time in getting CJ back. Of course, with CJ clearing protocol, um, as a matter of fact, he was asked, I think it was by Christy Reeking, um, one of the Houston sports reporters for the AP. She straight up asked him, do you expect to play on Sunday? He said yes and start. So he kind of broke his own news there. But the one thing that I took away from being at CJ's press conference on Thursday was the fact that he talked about how He and this team had to be patient because the one thing that he, Coach D'Amico Ryans, has talked about it over the last two weeks, and even Bobby Sawyer, when we asked him about, you know, what are the what are the intangibles that goes into players clearing protocols and and, and stuff with their concussion, and the one thing that they all talked about was patience and not rushing it because everybody goes, everybody who has a concussion, um, they they deal with it differently. I just go back a couple months ago when Tank Dale was dealing with it. I think he he only missed, what, one game? And he was basically cleared. He, he had that concussion in the game against the Atlanta Falcons, correct? Yeah, Atlanta Falcons. He was back out there on the practice field, I believe, that Thursday. And, of course, he did not play that following week against the New Orleans Saints. But 
just knowing, just seeing how fast he came back, Let's you know that his concussion was not as bad as CJ Strauss's. So, with that being said, here's what CJ had to say. Uh, it's it's great being back. I missed it. Um, I feel like um, everything that happened, uh, I wouldn't say it happened for a reason, but it's just it was kind of something that I guess God wanted me to go through. Um, it was tough. It wasn't easy, um, but. My teammates held it down as best as they could, and I appreciate them for that. And uh, now I'm back, and I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to just do my job again. Um, no, I wouldn't say it was scary. It was just um, just the right precautions and the right steps that I had to take to see progress. Um, it wasn't overnight. Um, and the thing about concussions that I've learned is that it's not um, like one-off fits all. It's like whatever that situation is, and um, for me, it was a little different than others, or um, it was just unique um, to what I went through on the field. So um, the training staff did a great job of just making sure that I was okay and wasn't forcing it and trying to come back too fast. And um, I appreciate them for just being honest throughout the whole uh, process and everything. But um, yeah, it, it, it was it was tough, but uh, we're through it now, and uh, I'm excited to play. One of my favorite things that CJ talked about during his time recovering from this um, concussion, he said literally the day that the Texans played against the Tennessee Titans was the very first day he was able to watch television. And he said over the last two weeks that he did watch all of the Houston Texans game. And he actually studied from afar um, as much as he could on TV. So he said there's some things that he noticed out there on the field that he can do better, that this team can do better, that he's definitely yeah. going to try to execute. So <laughs> that's sure, going to be <laughs> – I'm sure it is. <laughs> that's going to be funny. But, look, at the end of the day, man, it's just good to know that the Texans took their time with CJ going through concussion protocol. And on the flip side, regardless of how bad things look Sunday against the Cleveland Browns, they did go one in one in the two-game absence that CJ had. Yeah, and I think, honestly, I got a conspiracy here. I think once Houston won that Tennessee Titan game, I think they looked at the situation, assessed it, and said, hey, you know what? He probably could play, but <laughs> we are still in the running for the division. That mm-hmm. win is important. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to put him out on the field if I'm like the you know the brass of D'Amico and Nick Casario and everybody, and maybe above. Nick Casario, you know, maybe mm. some McNair, maybe maybe the McNairs was in the, in the building with this decision to say, you know what, we got to protect them still, absolutely, mm-hmm. no doubt about it. We got to protect them, and the best way to protect him right now is giving him an extra week, mm. letting them skip out on that Cleveland Browns defense, which I, I would think <laughs> that offensive line. How banged up that O line is, and by the way, is George Fan back? Was he back at practice? Oh yeah, yeah, he was back at. So practice. Fan is back at practice. Thank God, because Fan was out last week <laughs> with everything going on. Hey, we don't need to put him out against a ferocious defense like that. Hmm. So we'll wait. And now they got him back. Uh, what's a conspiracy of mine that they waited on purpose because they had that win against the Tennessee Titans to stay in the running to win the division, mm-hmm. which would be phenomenal. But uh, to to CJ's case, man, of, of course. When you see some things from the sideline, like, hey, you know what? If I'm out on the field, especially going up against the Titans uh, for the Texans again, and you didn't mm-hmm. go the first time, but maybe you saw some opportunities that this offense could have taken advantage of, of course he's going to be able to do some things differently. Number one, mm-hmm. he has a better arm, a stronger arm than Case Keenum. At this stage in his career, uh, well, it didn't matter in what stage. I'm about to say, it career, don't matter what stage. <laughs> he's more accurate than Case Keenum. And by the way, this is no disrespect to the H-Town legend, Houston Cougar. But uh, I'm glad Houston is getting him back. I think that mm-hmm. CJ is going to, you know, take a little minute to get into the, to his rhythm Sunday. I think the second half, we, we should see the rookie of the year, CJ Stroud. Mm. But I do want to emphasize this and – I've, I've seen some of the comments, whether it be on Twitter, whether it be on YouTube, mainly YouTube. I don't want CJ to have to go out there and win the game. Mm, what I mean good. by that is I don't want to see a Denver Bronco game where it just seemed like, again, if it was Case Keenum or, or David Mills out on that field instead of CJ Stroud, you take his talent away, that offense ain't putting up points. That offense mm. is struggling. 
that team ain't winning that football game. I want to see Bobby Slower. Can I understand Jeffrey Simmons is on IR? Uh, uh, Landry is on IR. This is a broken and beaten down Tennessee Titan team. But I want to see him get into a rhythm because his job is easier. Right, I don't want to see a lot of you know pressure throws. I want to see Bobby Sloick game plan his tail off to help his rookie quarterback get into a rhythm, to help this offense get into a rhythm. This offense hasn't looked the same, honestly, since Tank Dale went down. Mm-hmm. But even before then, you saw them in some of these dog fights. I think it was seven games in a row, maybe, where they were in uh, uh, three point games or something like that to, to, to end it off. I just want to see his offensive quarter to make his life a little easier. And again, guys, I can't – maybe maybe Denver, but maybe that was for the first half. But for all four quarters, the best game I've seen from Bobby Slow at call this year was the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that was, a, a, you know, in football terms, that was a long mm. time ago. I want to see him help his rookie quarterback out. But I know Nico Collins is excited to get you know his quarterback out on the field. I know Noah Brown. I know Dalton Schultz. I know, I know, the 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 receiving uh, core. I know everybody is excited to get their quarterback back on the field because he gives them the best shot to make the playoffs, to beat these teams, to beat the Tennessee Titans, to beat the Indianapolis Colts. He gives them the best shots, and I know the fans are happy because. The turnaround from four wins to four wins to three hmm. wins and one tie to possibly winning the division to making the playoffs. Rookie of the year has already been gifted to him in my eyes, but they are excited to get their quarterback back on the field, and so am I. Before we move forward to talk about how the Texans defense is banged up up front, I got to let you guys know about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the best spot for small businesses to look for different type of candidates. When you're hiring for for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible and available to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has all of the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. They aren't another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than 1 billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy, even when you have when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy that, in fact, 86% of small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs the best in the businesses, and they get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to this Friday installment of Locked On Texans. As we talked about in the first segment, it's exciting to know that the Houston Texans are getting C.J. Stroud back. Um, And like I mentioned, John, I think one of the best things about Stroud going down is the fact that the Texans did split the two games that he was out for. Of course, the long victory that they did get came, came almost two weeks ago in a win against the Tennessee Titans. And look, say what you want about the offense, but remember, nearly 14 days ago, came on this show and said that the Texans gave their best defensive performance of the season. It had a lot to do with them holding Derrick Henry to only nine yards on what, like 25 carries or somewhere along those lines. And the main guys who played a major role in the Texans' success, Malik Collins, Jonathan Gennard, and Sheldon Rankins. Those three guys were the primary contributors that everybody, from Coach Demico Ryans, players, Matt Burt, have gave a lot of credit to them improving the Texans' run defense. This is a team who has only given up an average of like 93, 95 yards on the ground for the entire season. However, John, the three guys that I just named are on the injury report. Neither one of them has not practiced as of right now. And as we record here on December 29th, 
2023, a couple days before the Texans face off against the Tennessee Titans inside NRG Stadium. Nine times out of ten, all three of those guys would not suit up. So on Thursday, I had an opportunity to ask defensive coordinator Matt Burt, is there any type of concern of you guys replicating the defensive success that y'all had against Derrick Henry without the, those potential three players? I put this quote up the other day in the room, the arrogance of success is to think that, uh, you know, what we did yesterday is sufficient for tomorrow. You know, so like it's a new game. Uh, we have new players playing. Possibly they do. I don't know, in and out. So, um, you know, we can't just my, – my, my caution was more like, hey, we can't just show up and think that – what happened in that game two weeks ago is just going to happen. We worked for that. All the guy, whoever was playing, you know what I mean? And so that's been the mindset. It doesn't really matter who's going to be in for us. Our approach is going to be the same. Our, our expectations are going to be the same of how we play this game. And um, it hasn't changed from two weeks from a, we have to, you know, stop the run. I mean, you saw last week that, you know, they were in the game. They had 162 yards rushing or whatever they had. So, um, you know, there's going to be a commitment from them to run the ball, and we have to have the same approach and mindset to, to stopping it regardless of who's on the field for us. As I mentioned almost two weeks ago, I understand that Derrick Henry isn't the guy that was arguably, if not the best running back for, let's say, the past five, six years in the league. Um, however, Derrick Henry is still a dangerous back. Last week against the Seattle Seahawks, he did rush for 88 yards on the ground, 19 carries, and one touchdown. John, if the Texans are without Jonathan Grenard, um, Malik Collins, <laughs> uh, Sheldon Rankins, and even as of right now, Will Anderson Jr., who is on the trajectory of missing his third consecutive game due to the ankle injury he sustained a couple weeks ago against the New York Jets, do you think this is going to be a revenge game for the great Derrick Henry? It could be, man, but that offensive line over in Tennessee is really banged up. Mm -hmm. I mean, really banged up. And so I think that when we look at the dominance from the Texans front four a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, that played into their favor. Yeah. Um, kind of like, you know, when they played and took on the Carolina Panthers, how banged up and bad that offensive line was. They had six sacks after the game, or seven. They had a lot yeah, of sacks. Yeah, after they the had six, I believe. Six? Okay, so they had a lot of sacks that game, and they took advantage of it. They did mm -hmm. it in Carolina. They did it in Tennessee, and I expect for them to do it again. Now, what I'm concerned about is no rankings, no Collins, then mm -hmm. that thins your rotation. Now you're looking at Kirk to play more snaps. Now you're looking at Khalil Davis to play more snaps, and luckily Houston – it just signed Tart. Mm -hmm. Now you're looking at Tart, who you know just came and played some snaps for Tennessee, maybe 21 days ago. But now your defensive tackle rotation is very slim. And do I want to see them put Jerry Hughes, uh, who, who's what 33, 34, mm -hmm. inside? No, mm -hmm. I don't. Do I? Do I want to see some? No, I do not. So I think that's the issue for Houston right now, and I, I think that that will lead to you know, maybe some more success because those dominant guys up front in the middle won't be there. Mm -hmm. But there is no game wreckers up front. Yeah. So that's the concern. You know, Ridgeway is out for the year. Houston did a very good job. We got to give a lot of credit to Nick Casario for staying afloat this season with some of his signings. Mm -hmm. But no game wrecking Malik Collins, no game wrecking Sheldon Rankins, no game wrecking John Gwinnard, no game wrecking possibly in Will Anderson. Those are your front four, your starters, and they've each had game wrecking moments or stretches mm. this year or dominant performances this year, and neither of them will be out on the field. So do I think that Houston will hold Derrick Henry to nine yards, 0 0.6 yards per carry again? No, I don't. But do I think that we'll see a better version of Derrick Henry? Yes, I do. However, I think the tenacity this defense can play with has an advantage on how banged up that offensive line is. I mean, even when that offensive line was somewhat healthy, they were not a good offensive line. So I think that does play into Houston's favor. I think that Houston needs to look at utilizing uh, different ways to create pressures. Maybe Matt Burke and D'Amico Ryan's draw up, draw up some blisses, but um, there's no if there's no gang records out there. Hmm. Nine yards is not happening, right? <laughs> Holding him to nine yards is not going to happen. 
Um, I could see him having a decent day for that offense. Not 200, though, right? Not, nah, <laughs> no, 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 Please, if, not if, 200. If, if Derrick Henry goes out there and rush for 200, I don't know what I'll do. But I don't think he's running for 200. I don't think he's running for a buck, honestly. Mm. They, they got to find ways to create pressure. That's it. And it sucks because not having a game record out on that field – Man, I hate to say that John Grenard is not on that field, man. I, I thought John Grenard had a shot to get at least 14, 15 sacks. He's at 12 and a half now. Mm. So if he comes back against Indy, it's a possibility. But, man, I want to see John Grenard just to, to get there. Uh, but rest up to those that are on the injury reserve. I mean, not, not injury reserve. They don't, there, are, there are on the injury list. Get better because – I think Houston has a chance to really win this game. I think they need all hands on deck next Sunday against the Colts. Before we move on to talk about Andre Johnson, he is the finalist for the Hall of Fame three years in in a row. I want to let you guys know about FanDuel. As the weather gets colder outside, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 winning bet on on their money line. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you're thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. This app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Welcome back, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers. Andre Johnson, three years in a row. Mm. One of the best wide receivers we've ever seen play this game. Has a shot to make the Hall of Fame. Cody, your thoughts? Not this again. Not this again. You know what? 2023 been a year of completion for this franchise. You Mm. finally get a head coach. You finally get a respectable offensive coordinator. You finally get another franchise quarterback. You finally get some weapons, good defense. Maybe, just maybe, this is the year where Andre Johnson finally gets in. Because everything that I just said, from the head coach to the offensive coordinator to the quarterback to 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 the to the respectable talent, not respectable talent, is the same thing me and John came on this show for the first three years and fussed and cried about. And we don't have to worry about revisiting those topics this offseason. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy for this upcoming offseason because we got some great things in store for you guys. But at the same time, I'm hoping that this is the last time that we sit here and talk about Andre Johnson being a finalist for the freaking Football Hall of Fame because it doesn't make no sense, God darn it. He should have already been in there. He should have been on there on the first try. But I understand it. I get it. There's only a handful of people that can get in on the first try. But come on, man. What happened to this year? This was supposed to be his year. It doesn't make sense. All I can say is this. For the third consecutive year, just take a look at all of the great wide receivers that's ranked, what, in the top 15 in receiving yards. And all of them played with another Hall of Fame caliber GOAT level, the GOAT quarterback itself for Andre Johnson. Come on, man. It doesn't make any sense, John. I'm sick of this. Get this boy in. Uh, uh, over a thousand passes, oh. 3,500 yards, 64 touchdowns this year. And who was his he best is, quarterback ever? Uh, it'll be Matt, Matt freaking Shaw. It'll be Matt, Matt Shaw. This year, he is among three receivers who are finalists. Tory Holt, greatest show on turf. Uh, Reggie Wayne, we know what, what he was able to accomplish with Peyton Manning as his quarterback. But, you know, I, I agree. Andre Johnson has always caught the short end of the stick, whether it's been the quarterback situation, whether it's been playoff success, uh, no matter what it is, but he's always up until like the last few years of his career has been able to be a dominant player uh, at his position in the NFL. Uh, But I think three years is okay. T.O. had to wait 
Uh, two years. That was some politics think, behind his. It, it, well, it was. It was but another one that should have been first ballot, by the way. I, because I, I think Randy got in first ballot. Yeah. So, and I, and I think Randy is the greatest of all time. But I understand Jerry Rice. <laughs> but I, I, I would say this: if To had to wait two years, I'm okay with Andre waiting three years. I do understand the politics behind To. Um, I honestly, Cody, like you say, I think. T.O. should have been the first ballot, but mm-hmm. because he was not, and because he had to wait a couple of years, I think that Andre should get in this year at the latest next year. At the, at the I mean, he can't, it can't be at, 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 after that. I think, the cut, I think cut. Yeah, it, but let me say why. Let me say why. You can't name me. Okay, you may got some guys in the 60s or 70s that's finally getting in. And the NFL's Hall of Fame list, it's hard. It's gotten a little bit softer in the last couple of years. But for a long time, you will see these Hall of Fame lists and be like, man, this guy hasn't played or been around the NFL since the 50s. Mm -hmm. And Deion Sanders has said something a while back that caught my eye. And I I agree with him that – the, the Hall of Fame should be top of the top, the cream of the crop. And if you're going to start letting some of these guys in, then maybe there should be an, another, uh, an additional room or another room where it's just the top of the top Hall of Famers. But I think in Andre Johnson's case, he is a top five receiver of all time. Thank you. So I think it's time to get in. But I think if it's not this year, year four, I'm okay with. All also considering how the NFL has traditionally viewed wide receivers, they've always got you know the short end of the stick in terms of getting the respect or uh, Hall of Fame voting. Mm-hmm. But it got to be at the very you know next year. It got to be it. If not, then I think it's a real problem. I just don't understand it, man. Look, I understand Terrell Owens. I mean, what the best quarterback he probably ever played with what, that one year with Donovan McNabb. And man, that was still good at the at that time. But it's like, like I just look at it from oh, a yeah, standpoint. Tony Romo. Oh yeah, and t- yeah, t- Tony Romo. Yeah, I-, I would give you that. Tony Romo at that time was 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 killing the game at that time. But whether it's Jeff Garcia when he was in San Francisco, whether it was Donovan McNabb, whether it was Tony Romo, whatever the case might be, at least. T.O. had those type of quarterbacks. Like, no disrespect to Max Schaub, but Max Schaub was the uh, best Matt quarterback. Max Schaub was, better than, was probably better than uh, Jeff Garcia. Uh, uh, I, you know what? Know. Okay, I may exclude Jeff Garcia off the list because I was young when I watched San Francisco at the time. My eyes was just fixated on T.O. But even T.O. can say he played with the, the, arguably the best version of Magnav, arguably mm. the best version of, of Romo. Like, I just don't understand how you have a guy who, yes, Matt Schaub is your best quarterback that he ever played with, but there was times where he didn't even know who who he was going to be catching passes for on certain Sundays because the Texas quarterback room was that awful. Then they had an opportunity to fix it in the 2006 NFL draft, but they decided to go another way. We're not going to talk about that, John, because I know how you feel about that and how I feel about that. But – To get back to what I'm saying, I just don't understand how you have a guy, Andre Johnson, who is arguably a top five, top ten wide receiver of all time. Look at what he's accomplished in his resume, excluding what a Super Bowl and a conference championship game, unfortunately. But you exclude those things. He is just as good as not better than some of the ones that we are calling the greatest of all time. That's just the way I'm looking at it. And I think it's more impressive that he did it without having those caliber quarterbacks. That's just yeah, I, I think Andre and in, in, uh, I think Andre and Steve Smith are one of the most intriguing wide receivers in NFL history to this point. Uh, the underdog, the undersized Steve Smith, as dominant of a wide receiver he was, came into the league and got his first Pro Bowl as a kickoff returner, kind of like Tyreek Hill, not as fast, of course, but you know, kind of the same trajectory as Tyreek Hill. And then you look in a few seasons and you think to yourself, he's not just a kick returner; he is a Bonafide stud wide receiver. And with Andre Johnson again, um, you just wish either he was younger or Deshaun was older. 
to maybe they their cross their paths could have crossed. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Enjoy your Friday. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube. Give me a follow on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12. We'll be back, hopefully, with a victory Monday hmm. for New Year's. That'll be your New Year's gift. Can't get a Christmas gift from us, but maybe you can get a New Year's gift. Hmm. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C O T Y D A V I S underscore 24. Really quick, Freya Taylor should get into it as well. Just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. <laughs> but until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.